Hi everyone, it's Victoria, the Soul Nurturer, here to offer you just a few moments to connect with self, your soul, offer you some hopefully nurturing material or at least some inspiring ways to consider how you're doing, how your life is, how's your love life. Mostly, I'm concerned about the love life with yourself. I like to talk about shifting from our wound story to our love story. So before we get started, what I've been trying to do with each video is to slow down first myself and then <laughs> invite you to take a moment with me. There's still a lot going on. 2020 was a lot of uh, intensity, roller coaster ride, a lot of transformational waves one after another. 2021 is still intensely transformational. We have a little bit more sort of, um, if we use the river analogy, you know, we, we hit the calmer waters and get to catch our breath for a little bit longer. And then here we go again. And this is one of those weeks where we're starting to amp up a little bit. Uh, there is a um, Uranus squaring um, um, Saturn. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and I felt it today. Um, and we'll talk about that more in a moment. But first, let's just take a moment. Okay, shall we? So take a seat if you can, or just close your eyes. Not if you're driving, of course, pull over or listen to this later. Thanks for taking care of yourself as we enter this time of nurturing soul and potential. So just allowing yourself to drop in right where you are. Let everything else fall away. Become present to your inner environment using the gift of compassion and sacred awareness. Noticing how you're feeling in this moment are you noticing about your body? Are you holding tension? Are you bracing? Or are you relaxed and calm? If so, good job. <laughs> and just following that breath in and noticing how you're breathing. I'm noticing I'm still doing a little shallow breathing. So let's really take it in deeper. There, there's my shift. So keep breathing deeply until you can feel that inner shift. What can be helpful is to say to yourself, first assess what you need and say, I have that right now or I am that right now. So say you are noticing some tension and you need some peace. So you breathe in with the thought, I'm breathing in peace and I am peace. And just letting go from there. Really, a few seconds, we can drop into a deeper place, reconnect to our souls, to what is still possible, and not be tossed around in the intensity of what is outside of us. Okay, so, hello. <laughs> we are in the third week of February. Um, and well, actually the 15th, so not quite the third, but I, uh, for February, wanted to talk about love. And so we're, I'm doing kind of a three-part series and maybe there'll be a fourth one to wrap up. But we started, my first talk was about self-love. We always need to start with ourself. We are the common denominator of all of our experiences, especially in relationship. So we looked there first, and then the second uh, talk was about what did we learn about relationships and ourself and love from our family of origins and mostly from our first teachers, our same-sex parent, and then the first love of our life, which is oftentimes the opposite sex parent, first love of our life. Our parents are definitely the first love of our life, but 
we start constructing that subconscious, I call it the love file, we're gleaning a lot from what we see from the interaction from our caregivers in their relationship, and then how they are in relationship with us. Are they present with us? Are they loving? Are they kind? Are they encouraging? Are they available? And do we feel safe in their presence? So there's a lot to learn right in that love file in the early stages of development. So that was my second video. I just offered a, uh, a I called it self-love exploration experience. I really don't like the word workshop. Maybe it was a class. I was teaching some concepts. But anyway, we did that on Saturday and it was amazing. Over Zoom, I'm amazed how deeply people can drop, how willing people are to open their hearts and share from a deep place and to really roll up their sleeves and do that deeper soul work, inner work. I learned a lot from them as well. It was fabulous. And I might take that material and put it into another online course. I'm doing that because I understand um, some people don't like to sit in a class with people. Some people like to go at their own pace and at their own time. And so these online courses I have, two of them now, I'm working on the dream work one now, and now I've got this love one <laughs> um, coming up right next after that. And it's an opportunity to be with yourself as you go through material. And I'm in there with you energetically and with my videos and my material. And as you go through the process and you answer the prompts, I respond and I'm always an email or phone call away. So um, if you're interested in me putting the contents of my self-love exploration experience into an online platform, let me know, make a um, comment below or reach out to me. So third look at love and this unfolding journey of transformation and healing and relationships are rich with opportunity to heal the greatest, strongest mirror there is, right? To see ourselves through what's reflected back in relationships, especially intimate relationships, okay? So what I invite you to do, like doing your own work at home or your soul work at home, is to, uh, and do this gently and with compassion, and if it feels like too much, stop, okay? Um, you are the expert of you, and you, more than me or anyone else, know what's best for you, okay? So, but here's some advice. Again, we want to glean from all that we've grown through and moved through. Hopefully we've grown through. And that's the point of this work is that we can take what we've lived through and grow through it. To review our past in the present moment um, in a way that allows us to um, heal more deeply, more fully. And um, that's, that's a gift. And that's, you know, oftentimes I hear from clients, I'm, I'm here again, I have to deal with this again. Yes, it's the journey, the whole, our whole life we'll be doing that. But here's the cool thing. The more we do our inner work, the more we're willing to be present to ourselves, the more we know who we are, we learn who we are, um, the deeper when something comes up that reminds us of the past, the deeper we can go with the healing and the more capacity and wisdom, and hopefully more self-love and acceptance and compassion, we have to look at it with new eyes, to recognize, first of all, we're no longer that person we were back when we had that relationship, and to honor how far we've grown, how far we've come, but to also think of it as an invitation, oh, something in my mouth, um, sorry, <laughs> I kept feeling something like, what is that? Um, and hopefully to, to have the compassion to, um, and the wisdom to drop in a little bit deeper with what's being revealed to be healed, that our soul trusts this is the time. So it's not like, oh, this again, it's like, oh, another opportunity to look deeper, to look with more capacity, more wisdom, more compassion and uh, to grow from that. And that's um, right where we are in terms of, you know, I talk a little bit about astrology. Fast forward if you don't wanna hear, but um, mostly people are really responsive to this. I think I was concerned about, you know, being on a Christian path, my Christian friends, but I'm getting a lot of wonderful feedback from my Christian friends that this 
yes, this is wonderful. And um, so it helps me to relax a little bit more into it. And honestly, though, it's me trusting God on my journey. Side note, when I was called to hypnotherapy years ago, after praying and praying for the next piece of the puzzle of my vision of serving others, I was delighted that I was guided so clearly to become a hypnotherapist 20 years ago. So clearly, this was uh, what I believe was a soul call from God. Delighted to find something so connected to my natural gifting. And then when I moved to a smaller town, kind of conservative town, and people were sort of questioning what I do. And there were even people who said, believe it or not, that they thought hypnotherapy was the devil's work. And I was flabbergasted. This soul call that I felt God answered a prayer and brought me to was considered so, I mean, it was such a horrible view. So I was, I think I felt not challenged, but uh, concerned that this, my beloved path that I was called to was so judged. And I got proactive. I talked to ministers and I looked at verses in the Bible and, and I found more reinforcement that this truly was a soul call for me. And that's how I feel about astrology. I became aware of astrology when I was a little girl and it helped me navigate and understand myself and my family and it helped me. It was just, it helped me when I'm helped in this way. I know it's from God. So side note, I'm going to do, I think a whole video, just talking about astrology, what it means to me, what I know about it. And uh, to help kind of help you out there, if you have any struggle with it. I did have a client call me um, after watching some of my videos and asked me for more clarification. Um, this client's on a Christian path and I uh, was happy to answer any questions and I'm always happy to answer any questions. Email me or reach out to me or even comment below. Anyway, I went further off into the astrology conversation than I had planned to. So back, back, back <laughs> to where I was going. But I do want to say this, that right now what you may notice be noticing is that we are moving closer to the Saturn square Uranus. Um, it cre creates a, a lot of, it can, I'm not going to say it does. That's the thing that astrology isn't a set in stone. This is how it's going to be absolute. It's like the weather might rain, get an umbrella, be aware. If it's raining and we have an umbrella, or even if it's raining, we don't care. Our inner state is our inner climate. We're in control there. So whatever this astrological weather is, you're still in control here. God's still in control. You have will. God's got you. So it's not like, you know, go hide under a rock. Although sometimes we feel like, oh my goodness, so much. So I just wanted to say that. But so there, there are possibilities of a certain kind of a feeling with the weather of astrology. Okay. So Saturn square Uranus. Um can feel, you know, it can feel like intense intensity, irritability. It's the mashup, as I often talk about this year, 2021, of old way, new way, and that kind of like a lot of um, friction. So, but isn't that's that's transformation, and especially this week, and especially this month of February, um, especially until the 20th, because we've been in the, the Mercury retrograde which has us review, review all this old stuff that we thought we looked at. And now though, we have insp inspiration and inspired awareness and innovative ideas of how to look at the old with new eyes and new possibilities, personally and collectively, okay? So that's going on right now. So that's why I chose to talk about love. You know what, for me, Love is a soul medicine that heals all, right? Heals ourselves, heals others, heals the world. So uh, just like Course of Miracles um, references that there's only two energies in the world, fear or love. There's been a lot of fear in the world, a lot of fear in us. We got to call ourselves back to our essence to love, okay? We heal from there. We contribute from there. So enough about astrology. Let's move on. So. At this time, um, reviewing, so I, we talked about self-love, last uh, first video I did in February, 
Uh, and then what, what did we learn from our family of origins about love and ourselves? That That is the key. We learned uh, messages directly or indirect, directly that we weren't worthy or good enough or something. We felt something was wrong with us or we didn't matter. You know, a lot of those negative core beliefs that we take on either, again, directly, or mostly inferred by what's going on or what need isn't met. And so those are the um, what gets in the way of love what gets in the way of receiving it and being it. So when we have this opportunity to review how far have you come, when we look back at our relationships we've had, this is rich, rich material to reference, to look at the, the patterns. So what I'm inviting you to do um, and pace yourself, maybe just look at one relationship and then maybe another. And if you're really bold, write down every significant relationship. I'd say significant ones first. Um, and then in general, you'll see the patterns, right? Because they're within you. You know, all relationships that we have with others go through our subconscious awareness, our patterns, our love file. So a lot of it's projection. A lot of it is, you know, just this person. And I believe this, this is a theory I have. When we fall deeply in love, it is a dance with our soul as well as the other person's soul. And we're gifted with this bliss of passion and love and seeing the highest potential of this person and showing up with the highest potential of ourselves, right? Especially the first honeymoon, the honeymoon phase of relationship where it's just so great and the person's so great. And then we sink in, we get comfortable. And when we get comfortable, we go from our conscious awareness. We're consciously choosing to lead with our best we sink into our subconscious material and so does our partner. And in our subconscious material is our love file, our relationship with self file and everything we learned about relationships from our families of origin. And now we're just operating in an unconscious way. We're not even aware what we're doing or saying or being. We're not even aware, but we're super aware of our partners, aren't we? <laughs> so, okay, here's the thing though. We have to constantly take it back to ourselves. Whatever your partner is doing is reflecting something in you. Um, and th this is tricky. It gets kind of muddy because, yeah, sometimes people are just jerks and sometimes people are very similar to, you know, family of origin relationships or significant relationships you've had before. Maybe they're exactly the same, but um, they're still teaching you what you're believing about yourself and where you're still engaged in that pattern that you're engaged in. You wouldn't be in a relationship unless there was something calling you to healing. Sometimes the healing is to walk away. Yes, it is because we didn't have choice when we were children. We didn't have a choice to say, you know what? Um, can we send in parents number, the second batch of parents and try this again? We have what we have and we grow with what we have, and we learn with what we have, and we're sculpted and shaped from what we receive, right? So so I want you to take a list of, uh, make a list of past relationships that were significant, or just start with one, and then review it. You can do it a couple of ways. One is, what didn't work in that relationship? What was bad, wrong, whatever, whatever the judgments about the relationships were, hard, um, Put that in one column and then the next column, I want you to put what I believed about myself because of what was going on, what I believed about myself, okay? And that's where we can work. What did you believe about yourself, right? When we're kids, we don't have a lot of choice. We just kind of take the default programming that's available. We try to be safe. We make a story up and I call it the wound story. It's our survival story, what we did to survive, be accepted and loved. And now we want to heal that. What part of you is still believing that? What we believe creates our patterns and um, connects us to um, what we create over and over again. So identifying the belief, the pattern, look at the theme. What's the consistent theme? And I've shared that my wound story is that my dad left when I was born. So a lot of my theme that is throughout all of my relationships is a feeling of being abandoned, neglected, okay? So you look at the common theme and then we come back full circle to self-love with the capacity you have right now, 
with the um, compassion and love and acceptance you're cultivating for yourself. Think of the age you were when you were in that relationship and take all the love you have right now as if you were talking to a wonderful, to a best friend or a child. What would you say to that younger self who was in that relationship? What would you invite them to? And here's something that's really important to notice when you're journaling about the relationship or relationships as you're reviewing, notice what's going on in your body. Is there still, is there regret? Is there shame? Is there anger, resentment? That's your work. That's your work. So if you feel hung up on that relationship, you know, pace yourself through it. But here's two things when you're doing this work. I'm just giving you a lot of goodies today because I just want all of us to love ourselves so we can be the best people we can be to create, co-create an awesome world together. Um, notice what's inside of you. Notice what you still hold for that other person. Um, there's a Buddhist term called jimpa. Um, and um, Pema Chodron talks a lot about that, where we're hooked into that other person, still unfinished business. Forgive yourself, put your hand over your heart, forgive yourself. I did the best I could with the information I had, with the patterning I had. And then want to play a big game, forgive the other person. Yes, forgive the other person if you can. If it feels too big of a stretch, be willing, willing and willing to forgive this person. Because you know what? They also were doing the best they could with their unconscious programming. So we want to do this work so we can get to creating a new love story that begins with the self-love we embody, that we share, we, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, radiate outward, invite others to love themselves. But we can't do the spiritual bypass and just suddenly say I'm in love with myself and I'm in love with life and everything's great. I mean, some people have those spontaneous healings. Awesome. I'm, I pray for one every day. But the truth is, <laughs> I do this work constantly, constantly. And I grow and expand constantly. I just had a little friction with my hubby earlier today. We're both growing. We are allowing for some anger to come forward, some stuff that we didn't... Uh, share when we were younger or you know it's coming forward and we give space to each other for that we know how to hold that and expand even more love once we do so well i guess what i'm saying is there's no there there it's a constant ongoing and you know there's no permanent release of these negative core uh, beliefs or patterns they're like the default areas of our past but the more we heal the more awareness we have the more record recognition we have of, ooh, this is familiar, this is old, and the more willingness we have to meet ourselves right where we are with love and acceptance and willingness to um, be present and do the healing work, the more capacity we have for more love for ourselves and others. And my phone is on. Excuse me, I'm going to keep going. I thought I had turned off my phone. Sorry about that. And the more capacity we have to be with whatever is brought our way. <laughs> this is kind of what my day has been like all day. One um, challenge after another, after another. And I just like, I could feel myself at some point, just like, okay, I'm done. Old way, new way. I'm not doing the old way, which means I have to settle for things that don't work. I'm not doing that. That's part of what if I'm looking at this old way, new way. And I suspect some of you are as well. If your old way was settling for things that, that were less than what you desired and wanted, new ways inviting you to envision what could be better. So as you do this inner work, you look at your, your patterns, you forgive yourself, you forgive the other person, you take forward what, what, you, what pattern was engaged in you, you create a new belief that supports a new pattern, then you vision or use the power of your imagination for what is that gonna look like? You must do this stage this step. Okay, I know that I chose people who couldn't be available the way that I needed. The belief there was I was not good enough. I don't believe that anymore. I know I'm more than good enough. I know that the person who's with me is a lucky guy. And <laughs> I remind my husband that all the time. And I act accordingly. When our beliefs are updated, we act accordingly. We 
we emit different um, energy and we teach people to meet us there in the knowing of who, and who we are and what we deserve. So you find the old belief, create a new belief, and then you visualize it. Why visualize it? We want your subconscious mind to have updated information. And what I jokingly say or lovingly say is we move out of that old neighborhood with all the old wound story and we move into this awesome new neighborhood where all of our need, needs are growing through us. They're met with our beliefs and our actions and our patterns. And we're growing and cultivating more self-love and we're experiencing more love reflected back more healthy relationships reflected back we're experiencing more of what we desire and less than what less of the stuff that we had in the past so all right i think i went on and on i don't even know how long um but i i had a lot to share and i hope this helps pace through this video if you need to but i just um want to invite you to this practice and then it's full circle as you are reviewing your past relationships, it is a, um, a measuring stick, I guess, as how far you've come and how much you've grown and how much love you have now that you can look at yourself and your past self with love and compassion and say, oh, my dear, you really were in it, weren't you? And I'm so sorry. Or maybe you can catch it yourself even in this moment to recognize the relationship you're in to see where you could offer yourself more love and compassion, maybe your partner. Yes, even your partner. Uh, that's what we want to grow and stretch to, okay? And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Reach out to me, either comment below or send me an email, private email at soulvisioning at gmail.com. Um, and just comment any way with anything. If you don't feel comfortable publicly commenting, just put a little heart in a comment and let me know you're with me on this journey as I share what I have to offer in terms of healing and transformation and all aspects connected to our mind, body, soul. And in particular in February, all about relationships and all about love. Here's the thing. I want you to just out love yourself. The person you see in the mirror, how can you love them better? What can you do in terms of self-care? You know, our, if you don't know your love, love, self-love, look at your self-care, how are you doing there? That is a direct correlation. Greater self-care, greater self-love. When you're neglecting yourself, that's not love. So be aware of that. Take good care of yourself. Really just take it to the next level and be curious of what that's going to look like. Loving yourself more, loving yourself forward, loving yourself as you review the past and claim something even more powerful for your future. All right. Thanks for spending some time with me. Sorry about the distraction of the phone. Um, and I'm looking forward to connecting, hearing from you. Subscribe if you haven't. Like and comment. That helps me get out into the public stream to reach uh, to more people with my mission and support and help others more with my transformational tools on this journey so we could all, you know, live with a lot more love more transformed and awesome selves to co-create an awesome world. All right, that's it. Peace out and peace in. Take good care until next time.